Today in the livestock market, corn was easier. That new high uh, early on just uh, started to fade. And uh, the premium to the futures and cash uh, was too big of a gap and really started to press the market. It was uh, just too great for the, uh, for the packers to really raise their bids. Uh, but the market was overbought and really vulnerable to a little bit of a sell-off. So that it came here at the end of the week and end of the month isn't that surprising. But the futures are uh, still remain re relatively on the high side with open interest on the puts outweighing the calls, uh, even all the way uh, out to the June contract. That just the expectation that there could be you know, uh, more of a press lower is possible, but there's still a lot more activity. Now the feeders were lower as well. The futures did fall six dollars for the week, uh, and just but just two dollars for the month. So uh, we gave back uh, some of the gains uh, from the on feed report, but uh, there is still uh, a, definitely some high high volatility in the market and. Uh, it looks like that the futures just had a little bit of a sell-off. Now, feeders have been one that's, uh, that's had a quite wide range in the markets, and we expect that there's going to be a lot more trade activity going forward. Uh, today in the hogs, it was very firm that strong cash market uh, really pushed that market a little bit higher. And right now that we're kind of in a consolidative uh, stage, but there's plenty of uh, pork demand and that's pushing futures a little bit higher. Uh, technically though, this uh, consolidation is somewhat of a springboard to move up to the next level. So in the hog market, it's really withstanding even the fact that the grains are railing as much as they are and the futures continue to move higher. Thank <laughs> you.